What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here, ready to teach you some more stuff about coffee. Um, today we are going to do all things espresso. I've decided because of how much I have to say about espresso that I'm gonna break this up into two videos so it's a little bit more digestible in one sitting. Um, so this first video that I'm going to go over is going to really look at extraction theory. It's gonna answer the question, what is espresso? And we're gonna look at different things like channeling and maybe some puck preparation uh, and just the ideas that go on with extraction. And then in the second part, which I would uh, highly advise watching this before the second, even if you're a seasoned coffee, uh, coffee professional or even a home enthusiast who's been doing espresso for a long time, I highly recommend watching this one so that you can have a foundation for the next episode. The next one will go over how to dial in your coffee based off of taste because people are so different around the world with how they taste food in general, they're obviously going to be tasting coffees differently. Some people in one part of the world might really enjoy a certain extraction percentage with their specific coffee whereas in another part of the world, it could be completely different. So I have a very specific way to teach how to dial in your coffee based off of your palate preferences. And you do not have to be a professional taster in order to follow it. I do it in a very simplistic, broken down way, but that will come after this video. So this one right here is going to be a breaking down of what espresso is. And then we're gonna look at those extraction variables. So let's jump right into it so that we don't waste any more time. All right, what is espresso? Now, a lot of you know the answer to this, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. A lot of times people assume that espresso is a specific type of bean. It's a bean that is only able to be made into that drink that's highly potent that we, that we consume, that is, you know, in, in the tiny little Dimitas cups. But in reality, what espresso really is, is not just a bean. In fact, there's no such thing as an espresso bean. There are espresso roast profiles where people are, where roasters are roasting coffee to a certain extent in order for it to shine more on espresso, but there's no such thing as specifically espresso beans. Any bean can be brewed anyway. Espresso is one of two things. It is a brew method and it is a beverage. So when I say it's a brew method, what I mean is similar to a French press, Similar to drip coffee, espresso is just another way to prepare coffee. So you're taking your whole bean, you're grinding it, you're adding water, and you get coffee. There's just a couple of extra elements that we observe to create espresso. The second thing espresso is, is the drink itself. So you have drip coffee, which is a really clean, thin, watery-like, uh, in comparison to espresso, watery cup of coffee. Whereas with espresso, you have a highly pungent, highly concentrated, thick, syrupy, viscous beverage that is about the same in caffeine as a drink six times its size. So we have the beverage, we have the brew method. That is what espresso is. So I just wanted to go ahead and knock down that myth that espresso is a certain type of bean, though yes, there are ways of roasting to epitomize uh, espresso, but that doesn't mean those beans can't be brewed in any other way possible. So you can take one bean, like for instance, the bean I'm using today, we can take that bean and we can put it on a French press, we can put it on a mocha pot, or we can put it on espresso. Any bean works on any brew method. Now we've covered that. We're gonna move on to what I think is very important, which is what is happening in espresso extraction? What is espresso extraction? How do we make it? So I'm gonna to cut to the side angle. Hello everyone over there because we're gonna take a look at this espresso machine. So what we have are some key parts. We have the porta filter, which is a portable filter. And again, I know there are a lot of you who are like, okay, Lance, I know all of this. I've got all of this. I've been doing this for years. Get to the stuff. Well, I'm gonna put time links below if you wanna skip this, but um, you know, it's only gonna take a couple of minutes, so maybe bear with me. This is a portable filter, and in it, we have our basket. So we have our porta filter, we have our basket, okay? And then we have our group head, which right here, is our group head. It's, the, it's the, the, lock, the locking in position, the locking in mechanism for the porta filter where the hot water and pressure comes from. And then of course we have our buttons to actuate the, the machine. So, oh, and there's one other thing. Right underneath, and we're gonna switch to this underneath angle. Right here, you've got the screen. And the screen is highly important. Behind the screen is a tube of water that's shooting water out at a really high uh, pressure and a really high temperature. This screen with all the holes that have been cut, but what we're trying to do here is evenly displace water, evenly disperse water that is being shoot out, shot out of that tube of water. All right, so now we know these different uh, parts of the espresso machine. We've got the buttons to actuate our, our water. We have our portafilter, our basket, and our screen. All right, so. Now that we have those down, let's talk about what's happening inside the basket. The basket 
is analogous to our, in, the bat, in a batch brewer, in your drip coffee machine, the frilly filters that you use. The basket is akin to that filter, except this one's made of metal and it has holes in it, right? And the reason is because we are pushing a very fine coffee into this basket and we're putting a high pressure, high temperature water over it. So if it was paper, it would rip, right? And there are a lot of other reasons as well, but that'll suffice for now. So what we do with espresso is we're grinding very fine grinds into this. Now, I'm gonna go and explain grinds, all right? So when you take a bean of coffee, which I say bean, but really we all know it's a seed, right? And maybe we'll do a sourcing uh, video at some point. But when we take a seed, a roasted coffee seed, and we break it through our grinder, we grind it up. Uh, the size of the ground, if it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the surface area is expanding. You're essentially letting the extractability increase. If we break it into less pieces, so a coarser grind size, that surface area is smaller. And so I know that might sound counterintuitive. You're thinking, well, look at that bean. You have all this surface because how big the bean is. How is that not the most exposed surface area? Well, look very closely at this, all right? So we'll zoom in so you look right at that bean. If I were to take a bit of this bean off in my hand, we would have the back end of that piece is now exposed, right? And the, the little bit that we've left here, the little chip out of the bean, is also more surface area. So imagine taking this bean, cutting it into four bits, right? We have four times the surface area, and I dropped the bean, of the bean. If we were to cut it a thousand times, we'd have a thousand times the surface area, right? So the finer, the smaller the grounds, the more the surface area is exposed. In espresso, we're going really fine. We're trying to pull out in a very quick amount of time as much as possible. And I'll explain these variables, variables of extraction soon. So now that we have our portafilter and our basket inside, we fill it with coffee grounds, right? And then of course you see people tamping it down or pressurizing the grounds of coffee. What happens once the water hits it? Well, if we switch to this side angle, you're gonna see when I hit this button, that trickling of water is slower than the drip machines you're using for drip coffee. How is that gonna give us the pressure in order to create espresso where there is emulsification going on? Now, to, to achieve emulsification, you have to have an extraordinarily high pressure, right? Well, what we just saw was not extraordinarily high in pressure. So how are we getting that to turn into high pressure? It's simple. When we pack in our grounds, we're leaving a little bit of head space. So I'm gonna put a little dash mark. I'm gonna hold this very still against my chin, right? So it doesn't move in fluctuations. We're gonna put little dash marks right here. There's a little bit of head space above where I've tamped those grounds, all right? Now that head space is important. As that water is trickling out, that head space is gonna allow it to kind of pull up and some of it's gonna trickle through that bed, but because we have tamped it, we've taken out air between the spaces of the grounds, because when, uh, when we grind and put coffee in here, it's fluffy, right? There's air between those fine grounds. When we tamp it down, we're negating that space. So the water's having a difficult time trickling through. So it kind of wants to sit on top until it starts to push back against the machine. Once it starts to push back, it's like a tug of war contest. This machine goes, oh, you wanna play games? Boom, and it actuates its pressure, all right? Once that pressure is actuated, typically nine bars, which we won't get into the, the intense physics of that, of what that means. Um, I guess it's not that intense, but you can always Google it. Um, Nine bars is the typical amount of pressure that's going through this bed. So once that headspace is filled, it's going to push onto the machine. The machine's going to actuate its pump and it's going to push high pressure water through our puck. All right. Now, the first thing that happens in espresso extraction, the very first thing is uh, a, a, what's called, a, well, I guess there's two things that happen at the very beginning. It's arguable which happens first, but there is a washing of the grounds and there is a fine migration. So the first thing we don't really need a, a visual of, right? Because washing the grounds, that makes sense. Water's gonna go through and before diffusion can even begin to occur because the pressure is so high, some of it's going to just go through, rinse off some of those fines that can fit through these holes, all right? I'm a very tangential person and I apologize. Let me explain fines real quick. Fines are when you take a coffee bean and you're grinding it, it's the little shards that are smaller than the particle size that you're wanting. So obviously when we, when we take our grinder and we're changing the numbers, we have a very specific grind size in mind. So on this machine I have here, it goes from zero to 31. So if obviously if I'm going to nine, I have the nine particle size in mind. If I go down to seven, I'm expecting the particle size to go from a nine, which obviously this is blown out of proportion. I'm expecting all of them to go from this to all of them being this, right? But no grinder is perfect. 
because coffee beans are brittle, they're going to, their shards are gonna fly off. And the way I like to describe this is if you, were, if you ever have taken a plastic fork and you try to break into two even halves, at the point of fracture, little shards of plastic fly off. So yeah, you essentially get two halves and you have two pretty even pieces, but there are pieces that you're not able to, to reclaim. They're shards that have flown out. We don't know where they are. You try to put the fork back together, guess what? There's little dots that no longer exist because they've flown all over the place. Same thing's gonna happen in any grinder. Obviously, worse grinders, worse grinders, I should say, I shouldn't use a superlative, worse grinders are going to produce more fines. Better grinders, for the most part, are gonna produce less, okay? So, fines, some of these can fit through the holes on this basket, all right? Some of them can fit right through. And since they are smaller than everything else in the bed, once that water pressurizes that puck and it begins to expand, there's a little bit of room for these grounds to move around. Those fines find their way to the bottom. So to give you a better visual of this, I'm gonna draw with my finger a basket. It's gonna be like a box, all right? And then inside of it, there are circles. And they're just all over the place, right? There are circles. Let's say there's 10 circles in there, 15, whatever. In between the spaces between these circles, there are dots, and those are fines, okay? And the fines fill the whole basket, right? When the water trickles down on top and that pressure actuates, those fines are gonna go all the way to the bottom. They're going to uh, gather at the bottom, and they're going to come out first. That's why when you start pulling espresso, you see really dark splotches come out of that port filter if you have a, a naked port filter you know, or without the spouts, okay? And that's why whenever you're pull, you're, you grab your cup of espresso, if you see those, uh, those black spots on top, those really dark spots or striations, that's called modeling or tiger striping. Those are fines. So if you took a spoon and scraped it and ate it, woo, you're gonna have an intense reaction, all right? So the first thing that happens is that fines migration uh, and the washing of the grounds. And then once all those grounds are fully wetted and it's been degassed because at the beginning it's going to expand and allow some of that gas to get out, after that, diffusion is going to begin. So that water has, it now, has now had enough time to enter into the grounds and it's able to do diffusion, which is raising the pressure inside the ground to higher than what it is outside of the ground. And it's going to move what's inside of the ground out and allow it to come through. Now, I know that was a lot. So feel free to go back before moving on, listen to it again, because I just threw a lot at you. All right, we're gonna go to TikTok again for the variables of extraction. If you saw my latte art video, you know I'm, I'm gonna hop on that TikTok trend, all right? There are six variables of extraction that I like to teach, all right? And these six are what you kind of wanna look at when you're doing manual brewing, drip, or espresso. This deals with how coffee is extracting, all right? One, and this is in no particular order, so don't try to attribute some sort of a hierarchy to these six. I'm just naming them as I have them in my mind because you know me, I like to come on raw and just boom, one take. All right, so number one, we're gonna look at grind size. As I was telling you earlier, the more surface area, the more easily exposed those goodies are inside of the grounds, the coarser, the harder, right? So grind size is going to affect extraction. So right there, boom, grind size. Number two, temperature. Number three, ratio. And I'm gonna break all these down, so let's not worry. Number four, contact time. Number five, pressure. Number six is, what have I forgotten? Oh no, agitation. See, I don't forget. Um, those are kind of the six that I enjoy teaching, all right? So let's go over each of them. I've already talked about grind size. So uh, f for the finer the grind, the more easily extractable the coffee is, the coarser the grind, the less easily that coffee uh, will extract. So um, that will help you understand with extraction. Though there are caveats, again, which I'll go over in the next video. So make sure you have notifications turned on to watch that one. So grind, we've already gone over. Uh, number two, uh, I can't remember which one it was, so I'm just gonna say uh, temperature. The temperature is going to affect extraction. The higher the temperature, the more extraction potential. The lower the temperature, the less extraction potential. As we're heating water up, it's getting excited. Those water molecules are bouncing around faster and faster and faster and faster. The more activity those water molecules have, the more ability they have to extract things from coffee grounds. So it makes sense, right? The more excitable something is, the more ability there is in order to take those things out of the coffee grounds, all right? Then we have ratio. Now when I talk about ratio, what I'm referring to is the amount of grams of coffee to the amount of grams or milliliters, because it's the same thing with water, of water. So just to give you a quick understanding, when you hear the term ristretto, that typically refers to one gram of coffee to one 
to around one and a half grams of water. Now, what does that mean? I know I'm speaking a lot and you're like, okay, this is difficult to kind of follow. Well, let's just use numbers. Let's say we put 20 grams of coffee into our portafilter. All right, 20 grams of coffee. Now, for the ratio to work, if we want a really tight ristretto and the ratio is one to one, then you would multiply 20 by one, right? So that's how ratios work. So if we put 20 grams into the portafilter, we would want to pull out 20 grams. Now, when I say pull out, I'm not saying how much water we put through the puck. I'm referring to how much espresso is yielded at the end. So once you have pulled your espresso into your cup, you weigh what has come into the cup, that should be the 20. That is, that is the other side of the ratio to which I'm referring. If we're doing a bigger ristretto, you know, maybe one to one and a half. So 20 grams into the portafilter, 30 grams into the cup. Typically, shops look at a one to two ratio as kind of their normal approach to coffee extraction. So 20 grams in, 40 grams out. And by the way, I'm using 20 just as an example because it's easy math, all right? That, you don't have to do 20. It's just understanding how those ratios work. Now for me, I enjoy much bigger ratios because I'm able to get more of an extraction. Uh, and again, that'll be in a later video. So now we have temperature, we have grind size, and we have ratio. The next will be pressure, all right? That's probably not my TikTok list in that order, but we're gonna go pressure. So this is the next one I remember. Again, to an extent, and this is where it can get weird after you get to a certain pressure, to an extent, the higher the pressure, the higher the extraction potential. There have been studies that actually show, uh, and I just have not had access to machines that go this high, that once you get to a certain pressure, it actually is gonna inversely affect uh, the extraction. And a lot of this is going to be because it's the, the pressure is so high, it's going to force channeling. Just know that the higher the pressure, the higher the extraction potential. All right, the next one will be time, and again, Coffee is very intuitive. The higher the time, the higher the extraction potential. But again, to an extent, there's only so much coffee that can truly be extracted. So at some point, that coffee is gonna stop extracting. If you run a shot for five minutes, you're not gonna keep ex increasing extraction. That coffee is gonna be like, yo, I'm done, right? So the higher the time, for the most part, the higher the extraction potential. The lower the time, the lower the extraction potential. And then finally, we have agitation, which has nothing to do with espresso, but when you're doing pour overs or things like that, obviously if you're stirring, you're assisting that uh, agitation, that excitement of those grounds, and it's gonna help give off those goodies inside the grounds. But that one doesn't matter for this. What I like to teach with espresso, uh, I do like to go over the, those variables because I think it helps in the understanding of how extraction occurs. But really the, the variables you should be looking at at home are uh, 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 grind size, ratio, and contact time. I know I didn't say pressure, and I know I didn't say temperature, and it's because for the most part, most machines, it's not easy to change temperature. Now, if you have a machine where you can play with it, that's great. For the most part, don't tell people to change it, because typically, people who enjoy really light roasts are gonna keep their, they're, they're gonna consistently drink pretty light roasted coffee. People who like really dark roasts are gonna pretty consistently drink dark roasted coffee. People who like medium developed coffee are pretty, pretty consistently gonna drink that type of coffee. So the only thing I'll say about temperature is if you drink well developed coffee, like in that medium kind of range, which just so you know, I don't like light, medium, dark, but for the purpose of this beginner video, we're gonna use them. I would say, keep your machine around 200 uh, degrees. If you drink really light roasted coffee, kind of like that Nordic Scandinavian style roast, go up to about 205 degrees. And if you like really dark roasted coffee, go down to about 195, if you're able to change your temperature. If not, don't worry about it, all right? That's the one that I think has the least uh, amount of change onto what's going on. I think you can make great espresso with any of those temps uh, it, just by manipulating grind size, contact time, and ratio, all right? So let's look at those three. So those three are what you should be looking at as you're dialing in, whether or not we should go finer with the grind or coarser with the grind, whether or not we should go um, longer with our time, so whether we should do a 20 second shot, whether we should do a 30 second shot, and whether or not we should do a one to two, a one to one and a half, a one to three. And again, when you're looking at these ratios, it's very simple, just take your dose and multiply it by the ratio you want. So if you're wanting to do a one to three and you dose in 20 grams, times three is 60. If you're wanting to do a one to two and a half, the dose ends 20, dose out's 50, et cetera, right? So those are the three I really recommend looking at. All right, so let's talk about how espresso is going to be extracting, all right? We've looked at the variables of extraction. Let's look at how it's actually going to extract. Now, this is going. This is where it's kind of wonky, right? So the co uh, coffee, especially when it's ground as finely as this, is going to want to extract readily. Remember I said there's only so much coffee that can be extracted in a, in a bean or in a puck? 
Well, it wants to give it off rapidly. So the biggest amount of your extraction is gonna happen immediately, all right? And that's why when you begin pulling your espresso, it looks really dark and really viscous and really creamy when you start it. And as it keeps going, it gets lighter and lighter. Now, we're gonna put up uh, some, uh, maybe an X, Y axis here, okay? And on the, uh, the Y axis, what it's going to be is concentration. So just imagine that says concentration. And uh, down here, it's going to be time, all right? So concentration, time. Now up here is going to be coffee and down here is water. So at the beginning you have that really dark, sludgy, thick, warm honey type substance that's coming out of the portafilter. That is a uh, high concentration coffee, low concentration water, because that coffee wants to rapidly come out. And on top of all that, we also have all those fines that are coming out that are uh, contributing to that thickness, right? So we have a ton of coffee at the beginning and not a lot of water. And as the ex extraction is happening, there's less coffee to extract so more water is going through and less coffee is coming out until they inverse, right? So at some point, since there's only a finite amount of coffee that can be extracted, it's going to be decreasing as you continue your extraction, right? As you push that extraction forward and that, and you can see it, and we're about to look at a shot so that you can get a good visual on it. As it continues, that concentration of coffee goes down, the concentration of water goes up. Coffee down, water up. So the longer you're extracting, they're inversing, okay? And we're gonna point that out. You're gonna see a color change and you're gonna see a viscosity change. So the thickness of that liquid and the color are going to change from darker to lighter, from like a dark brown to a light yellow, and it's gonna change from like a warm honey to a, honestly, like water, okay? So let's take a look at that. Boom. All right, so now I've started my espresso extraction and we're gonna watch really closely to what's coming out from this underneath angle. So as you watch, the first bits come out, look how dark that is, right? And it's very thick, it's like warm honey, all right? And as it keeps coming out, you see that color changing? It's now a bright yellow, and it gets more and more quick. You see, you see how the apex now is down here? It's getting quicker and quicker and quicker. And now I'm just gonna let it keep running way past what I'm wanting, because I want you to see how, how light it gets. Now we're essentially just washing those grounds again. There's not much extraction going on now. You see this? Look at that, it's just water coming out. It's just washing those grounds. There's nothing, no more extractions really occurring. We're just watering down our espresso. All right, see that? All right, so we're gonna stop that. And now we've pulled like a five ounce or six ounce shot of espresso. Cheers, I'm gonna down it. No, I'm not, that's awful. Um, so that was in 48 seconds, all right? As you saw, there was that viscosity change and there was that color change and it's from that inverse relationship. All right, so keep that in mind as you're extracting. So. The longer you extract coffee, the more it will extract, but the slower it's going to extract. And this is gonna help you when you're dialing coffees in. I truly believe having a grasp on the variables of extraction and understanding the phases of extraction will assist you in dialing in whatever coffee you put on your bar, regardless of your machine, regardless of your grinder, you're going to understand how to get more out of your coffee. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on quickly because I know this, this video is running long and I said it was gonna be short, but what can I say? I love talking about espresso. Last thing I wanna talk about is channeling. What is channeling? Well, what is a channel in general? A channel in, in, in real life, what has been borrowed for espresso is when a river is getting too heavy, when the flow of a river is too heavy, it branches off, right? And those little branch offs of a river are called channels, all right? So they're little thin streams because the, the amount of water in that river is so great, it just, it, it's, it's pushing and breaking off and splintering off, right? So it's kind of like you have a tree that has branches coming off, right? So a channel is when there's so much water coming through, it's like, oh, it's too hard to keep going this way and to keep my pace, I'm gonna branch off, I'm gonna branch off. It's easier to go this way. There's a little, there's a little crack, I'm just gonna fill the crack and go, right? Channeling is the number one enemy in espresso extraction. Channeling is a big time enemy. If there is any, like if there is a big inconsistency in your grind size, if you don't distribute your coffee well, and I say distribute, I mean in the beginning process after you grind and put in your portafilter, if there are vacuous areas in your bed, if there are like a lot of clumps that are affecting the distribution of coffee in your bed, then when you tamp down and you have less, uh, less uh, here actually let me just give you a, a, good, a good picture of that. If you have areas that are less packed, than other areas, you are going to get water running over those areas. So um, there's actually a, 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 a misunderstanding in what over extraction means. People will taste a coffee and go, wow, this is really bitter. It must be over extracted, right? But in reality, it might not be over extracted at all. It may be overall under extracted. 
but there could have been some big old channels that were over extracting. So if you have the coffee bed here, so the pucks here, I'm just lifting it so you can see it. Let's say that you did not adequately put those grounds throughout the bed of coffee. So you did not take it and you did, uh, and we'll go over this in the next video. I like tapping my bed to shake the grounds down. Let's say you didn't tap it well, you didn't distribute it well, and now there are areas with less dense coffee. Then when I tamp, there's areas where it's easier for water to get through, right? So let's say it, what you want is everywhere to be the exact amount of grounds from the bottom up, right? And every single position on that bed. But if you don't properly distribute your coffee, if you don't put the coffee perfectly everywhere and distribute it well, then what's gonna happen is water will find those areas of less concentration and water will flow there. So 80% of that bed could be way under extracted, but those two areas or three areas or five areas that you didn't pay attention to could be exposed with water. And those areas are going to be hit with hot water at a high pressure and it's going to contribute a lot of bitters. And all the other areas will be under extracted. But what's gonna happen on your palate? You're gonna taste that really bitter, dry, over extracted, tannic type of taste that comes from those over extracted areas. So uh, what we're wanting to do when we're uh, distributing our coffee is ensuring that we make it as even as possible so that the water, once that pressure kicks through, can move through all of the grounds at an even pace. Obviously, to an extent, this is impossible, but we can get better and better at it based off our puck preparation technique and based off our um, uh, our grinder quality, as well as different uh, methods that we put in within our preparation, which will be uh, looked over more in our dial in by taste video, which will be after this. All right. So in conclusion, and I know that this was a lot of information. All right. And I hope, and I know it was all talking. It was all lecture. We only pulled one shot, but I want you to um, try to remember these variables of extraction. I want you to remember those three main ones, which are, and we're doing Door of the Explorer because I don't want you to leave the video just yet because these are important. The three main ones are, yep, grind size, contact time, ratio. That's correct. All right. So now that we have those three, and we understand what channeling is and how important it is to have the proper grinder and to really ensure that we're giving our time distributing the coffee, uh, I think it's time to move on to the next video. I wanna thank you so much for your time. I understand again that this lecture has been kind of drawn out. I talked a lot. There was a lot of heady information in that. Uh, but if you have any questions, as always, I respond to every comment or at least I'm trying to. So far I haven't missed any, I don't think. Uh, please drop a comment. Share this with your friends, you know, like, subscribe, do all that jazz to help boost the algorithm so I can continue to push more energy and more funds into these videos. Um, I'm gonna link right here, my most recent latte art video, so that you can go watch that if you're trying to work on your latte art. And right here is my milk steaming video. I am still brand new at this. This will be my fifth or sixth video. Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching, for making it this whole way. And I'm excited for that next video, which is espresso part two which will be dial in by taste and it'll inc include my distribution understandings. Thanks for watching and cheers.